From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Jim Carter, Johnny. Anything on Hillary Franks? He just telephoned me two minutes ago. What? I'm on my way to meet him now and try and make a deal. I told him if he'd give me a statement about the attempt to fraud worldwide on Lansing's $50,000 policy, I'd do my best to have them drop charges. Well, you didn't make any promises, Johnny. I couldn't make any promises, Jim, but I'll do my best to see that the charges are dropped if he gives me that statement. Well, if he gives you that statement, I'll help you. Where are you meeting him? At the... at a place near here. He knows every cop in the area is looking for him? Yeah. Be sure he doesn't give you a bullet, kiddo. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar in Tucson, Arizona to the Universal Adjustment Bureau Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is a further accounting of expenditures during my investigation of... Well, it was a case of 50,000 insurance to one Arlene Kennedy. Unless I could prove my point in the Lansing fraud. Expense account item 10, 10 bucks, cab fare, from my hotel to the Mission San Javier to talk to Hillary Franks, the insurance agent with no future ahead. I used a taxi cab instead of my rented car because I didn't want to waste time searching around for the mission. It was a few miles outside of town over rough and broken desert roads. An ancient missionary church standing stark against the moon-filled night. Here we are, mister. Good. Here. Keep the change. Well, don't you want me to wait for you? No. I'll get back okay. Not many places to call a cab from out here. Yeah, I know. One of the Padres, your friend? No, no, I'm new around here. You all right, mister? Hmm. You feel all right? You're loaded or something? No, why? We're coming out here at midnight. Well, it's just a whim, friend. Don't worry about it. Have it your way. Mister? Yeah? You gonna meet somebody here or something? Why? I just saw a guy standing over by the bell tower. Oh, thanks. Good night. Franks had a 38 pointed right at my chest. In the bright moonlight, I could see that he was still wearing the same clothes he'd had on two days before in his office. He needed to shave, and judging from the circles under his eyes, he hadn't slept much. He was pale and shaken. A gun wobbled in his hand. Anybody with you? I came along. Did you tell anybody you were meeting me? Jim Carter. He's been working the case with me. Did you tell him where? No. Look, you don't need that gun, Franks. Put it away. I just came here to talk with you. All right. Thanks. Want a smoke? Thank you. Why did you talk to Carter? What did he say? He said he'd help me try and have the charges dropped against you if you give us a statement. Now, you have two of us on your side, Mr. Franks, if you want to cooperate. Do you? I want to straighten out what I can, Mr. Dollar. Well, now's the time to do it. What was your deal with Arlene Kennedy, James Lansing's sister and beneficiary? I met Arlene Kennedy right after my wife died. I guess I was very lucky. Well, that's perfectly natural. I became interested in Arlene because we had a great many things in common. So I thought. I mean, she was a widow and had no one except her brother, James Lansing, in Los Angeles. And we went together, and eventually I asked her to marry me. But she laughed at me. Why? I guess I'm not an exciting man, a witty one, or even an interesting one, Mr. Dollar. Mrs. Kennedy made me feel as though my whole life had been hopeless, useless. Raising children, selling insurance. She made me feel as though I'd miss a great deal in life unless I married her. What is it? What do you want from me? What do you want from life, I'd ask her. And she'd only laugh. Laugh at me. Go on. I I just can't tell you how desperate it made me feel. I I loved her, Mr. Dollar. I, I wanted her. 
Did she ever answer your questions? Oh, many times. She pointed out that her trust funds pay her over $700 a month for life. And she knew that my commissions and salary as a broker came to about the same. Oh, Mr. Dollar, we could have lived very comfortably on that kind of income. But Arlene talked of traveling, of Europe, of clothes, and, oh, I don't know, things her family had been able to afford for her once many years ago. And she said she wouldn't marry unless we could look forward to that kind of life. She wanted $50,000 in cash instead of money just trickling in every month. That's about it. When did she get around to the proposition, her brother's insurance? Her brother came here from Los Angeles one day. The doctors there gave him a year or two to live. Oh, yes, he was pretty shot. Been drinking for years. He'd used up all his money, oh, a long time before. He asked Arlene to help him. She paid his apartment rent and gave him enough money for liquor. And then one day... One day, she came right out with it. She said she was investing in him. And he was a good risk. Because she knew he'd die. That's how she put it to me. Mm -hmm. Arlene said all I had to do was see to it that her brother had a nice, fat policy. He was going to die. Why not cash in on it? I must have been crazy to even think about it. How did you work it? I mean, how did Dr. Mayhood pass him? I paid a man $100 to go to Dr. Mayhood's office and take the physical for Lansing. What was the man's name? Oh, no, no, I wouldn't tell you that, Mr. Dollar. He's not involved in anything. All right, we'll let that go. Once you arrange for Lansing to become insured, you and Mrs. Kennedy just planned on waiting for him to die. That was the general idea in view of what the Los Angeles doctors had said. <sighs> Once I'd done it, I mean, gotten him insured... It was too late to turn back. Did you want to turn back? Yes. What did Mrs. Kennedy say about backing well, out? She thought I was weak and afraid. Oh, then things weren't so good between you. Oh, they never were, Mr. Dollar. The idea was to wait for Lansing to die, collect the 50000 and get married, huh? I suppose so, yes. But, but once he was insured, she talked less and less about our getting married. You're leaving something out, Mr. Franks. Huh? Didn't she tell you exactly what kind of a position you were in? Didn't she fix it so that you couldn't make a move? Legally, she'd done nothing wrong. It was you who had arranged for the physical, you who had made the application for insurance in the name of her brother. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, she was clear about all that. And she told me so every time she felt like it. When you write down what you just told me and sign it, we can hold it over Mrs. Kennedy's head to prove attempted to fraud and collusion. Now, would you do that, Mr. Franks? Yes. Then I guess we'd better get back into town. Huh. All right. Come on, Mr. Franks. We walked three miles over to the highway, flagged down a car, and got back to the hotel about 2.30 in the morning, got Jim Carter out of bed. Enclosed, fine notarized statement of Hillary Franks explaining his part in the matter regarding policy 678JN23L. Before he was finished, Carter had already telephoned the Tucson police, telling them that the charges were being dropped against Franks and that he was no longer a fugitive. Then he placed a long-distance call to Worldwide's president in Hartford. Jim Carter, sir. I want to ask you not to prosecute Hillary Franks in this matter. Yes, sir, he's given us a complete statement about the whole thing. I don't think we have to go any farther than that. Well, look, the guy made one mistake. The first one in 17 years, he suffered enough for it already. Yes, sir. Dollar feels that way, too. Yes, sir. I think it's okay, Mr. Franks. All right. I thank you. What are you going to do, Mr. Franks? Well, sure, I'll never sell insurance again. I, I think I'll close up and just move away. Far away. Thank you. Poor guy. Oh, let's clean up the rest of this and get out of this town. Sure, Johnny. Hillary Franks pulled out of Tucson that afternoon. When Mrs. Kennedy was shown a carbon of the enclosed statement of Hillary Franks, she instructed her attorneys to withdraw the suit against Worldwide. Expense account, item 11, $75, hotel and board while in Tucson. Item 12, $402.15, plane tickets, Tucson to Hartford for Carter and myself. We were scheduled to leave at 1.30 in the morning. 
two hours before plane time, I drop by Mrs. Kennedy's house to have her sign a release of all claims on the insurance company. And for other reasons. Kennedy to the couch, and I did what I could for her. I phoned the police and told them to bring an ambulance. After that, I began looking around. I found a dark stain on the window still leading outside to the back of the house. On the floor, a blood-stained letter opener. There was no gun in sight anywhere. I decided if I had been stabbed with a letter opener, it would be easier to try to make it out the back way than risk the street that was bound to be full of policemen any minute. I was right. <laughs> Hillary Franks was on a ledge of rock that rose above the back of the house. I ducked behind some cactus plants. Get away from me! You know I won't. You know I wouldn't when I let you walk out this afternoon. Johnny Dollar! That's right. Now put that gun away and come on off that ledge. Get away! Go away! You missed by a mile. You don't know anything about shooting a gun. Come on down. Stay where you are. Don't do anything foolish. I'm coming after you. I'll, I'll shoot! Good shot, Dollar. Can you walk? No. Why did you do it, Mr. Franks? I came back to see her tonight. She laughed at me. Said if we had gotten the insurance money, she she was planning to run away with, with someone else. Oh. She just used me all along. Mrs. Kennedy was dead when the police got there. Hillary Franks died en route to the receiving hospital. Item 13, 15 bucks, hotel, one more night in Tucson. Expense account total, $1,121.13. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, there'll be another exciting story beginning next Monday night. Next week, a quick trip to New York to the bright lights, the glamour of Broadway with its theaters, its actors, and, uh, yeah, some very bad actors. You might even say killers. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Mary Jane Croft, Vivi Janis, Jean Tatum, Hi Everback, Barney Phillips, Russell Thorson, and Howard McNear. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>